station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston station, we're ready for the event. WCAI Radio, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Please call station for a voice check. Hello, Sunny. Hello, Sunny. Hello, is this Mindy? It is, and uh, joining me in studio is your sister, uh, 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 Dina, who is here with me in Woods Hall. Hi, Sunny. Hi, Dina, how are you? I can't hear. I can't hear. Hi, Dina. Hi, Mindy. How are you? Oh, there we it's go. good to hear your voices. There we go. Hi, Sonny. Uh, we are so excited to be talking to you. Uh, you up in space, us here in Woods Hall. Dina, you were wondering where she is. Uh, yeah, Sonny, we're just wondering where are you flying over right now? We're just wondering where you're flying over right now. Oh, I didn't look at World Map. I know a couple minutes ago we were over Japan, so I'm sure we're, we're heading uh, eastward, getting a little bit closer to the United States right now, but uh, I didn't check World Map exactly to know where we are. Um, I'll try to do that in a little bit. Your last visit to the International Space Station was aboard one of our shuttles. What was it like to blast up into space aboard a Russian vessel? Is it similar to the shuttle or very different? Um, it, it's both similar and different. Um, you know, in the space shuttle, of course, there's a lot of people and friends and family who are there uh, in the Soyuz just for, for getting everybody to Kazakhstan. Just a lot fewer people, friends and family, but a whole bunch of, um, you know, support people who are there in Kazakhstan. The rocket itself is a little bit smaller. On the shuttle, we had seven people, seven crew members flying. On the Soyuz, just three of you, and you're pretty close together, all squished in a, in a little capsule together. So I sort of think of it as like a station wagon versus a VW bug in so far as the living compartment when you're blasting off. Um, the shuttle, of course, had two solid rocket boosters, and so the ride's a lot more bumpier in the very beginning for the first minute and a half until they dropped off. Um, the Soyuz is a liquid-fueled rocket, so the whole ride is pretty smooth. Um, I think people back at home on NASA TV probably saw the interior of uh, the spacecraft because the camera comes on pretty shortly there after liftoff, and it almost looks like we're sitting still but it's dynamic inside I guarantee you that because it, it's you know it's multi-stage so every time a stage falls off um, there's pyrotechnics and you feel a pretty big jolt and uh, that's probably obvious on TV too when people were watching and it was very obvious inside the capsule so um, you know that's that that's the biggest difference I think is the size and then getting up into space a similar uh, profile we took two days to get to the space station and so we had some time to acclimate um, a little bit smaller again working space in the Soyuz but uh, but it very similar once we get to orbit the whole process to uh, come in and dock I want to get right to some of the uh, you're going to be running the Falmouth Road Race up there and you're also doing a triathlon being in space for a prolonged period of time tough on your body uh, so it, in an effort to combat those negative effects that's really why you want to be doing this triathlon in space how's the training going when is the triathlon and how do you swim? <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy this time to be uh, participating in the in the road race. It's uh, just over seven miles. It has a long history. This year's its 40th uh, reunion, and also the triathlon with Dr. Sanjay Gupta, um, and that's in September. So one in August and one in September. I've been up here for two weeks now. Uh, I've been working out on the bike, which is right in front of me. Also the treadmill, which is around the corner, and the advanced resistive exercise device, which is a weightlifting machine based on vacuum uh, that we're pushing against the vacuums in a, uh, a can in a canister. The A-RED is new since I was here last time. The treadmill is a new treadmill with a wider base. Um, so those two pieces of equipment are huge upgrades since I was here last year, or last time rather. And so uh, um, we've been working out on those two pieces of equipment uh, pretty heavily. I'm doing an interesting exercise protocol. It's an experiment. Um, it's called Sprint. And so it does have us doing sprints on the treadmill and uh, pretty much 
trying to max out on your lifting. So for this first two weeks, it's been tough. Uh, microgravity is nice to your body. You, you know, you can float around. It feels good. Uh, but when you simulate gravity, when you're on either the treadmill or the exist, uh, A-RED, it sort of hurts. And so it's been a bit of a, an adjustment to get, get into the exercise. But I think by, uh, by a couple weeks for the ra road race, I'll be ready. I've uh, ran up to uh, five miles continuously now. And, uh, and, and I think I'll be ready for the triathlon for sure. Well, look out, Sonny. <laughs> Uh, that was Dina. Yeah. So, Sonny, um, tell us a little bit about the science that you're working on up there. Sure. If you can see all around me right here, we're in the U.S. laboratory. Um, there's all sorts of setups for science experiments. There's also uh, behind you, the camera, there's a, the a Columbus module, which is the European module for experiments, and also the Japanese module on the left-hand side. And further down, of course, is the Russian module where there's also experiments going on. Um, just recently, uh, I did an experiment called BASS, which is looking at uh, combustion um, in, in a, uh, a microgravity glove box, which is right here in the U.S. lab. Um, we've also been doing, associated with Sprint and uh, a couple other experiments, we've been doing a lot of ultrasound, so we've been ultrasounding the muscles in my leg, uh, also my heart. Uh, we'll also be doing ultrasound on our eyes just to see how things are changing up here. We've had some uh, issues with eye, is eye problems, um, and Sprint will take an, get an idea of how the muscle changes uh, over time in your leg. Cardiovascular ICV is the one that looks at your heart to see what happens to your heart in microgravity after some time. Of course, we're also doing all sorts of other material sciences while we're up here. Um, there's a robot that we uh, will we'll, uh, work with also. We'll program him. There's experiments that are going on outside of the space station that we really don't interact with. Um, uh, there's AMS, which is a uh, magnetic spectrometer, as well as a refueling mission that's going to happen during this increment at some point in time. And just recently, right before this interview, I was checking out the spiders. We have two spiders on board, Cleopatra and ne Nefertiti, and I had to feed them some fruit flies, um, and we're checking out how they work because they're jumping spiders, and of course, on Earth, they use gravity for, the, for their jumping to catch their prey, prey, so we're watching to see how they're adapting to microgravity up here. Yeah, this is your second trip into space, uh, and on, on the aboard the International Space Station. So you've spent quite a lot of time in space. Are there still times that you glance out the window and find yourself catching your breath in awe? Oh, absolutely. You know, when I was up here before, we had. Uh, just a window, a big window on the U.S. segment right here in front of me. Um, now it's covered by an experiment called WARF, which is, uh, a uh, it has taken off the scratch pane so we can take beautiful pictures. Uh, but most of those are remotely done uh, through, you know, with in programs with kids planning pictures and uh, all sorts of other uh, programs that are working on uh, automatic pictures from this window. So I can't use this window, but around the corner we have a thing called the cupola, which is six windows around and then one big window in the center, and it hangs off the bottom of the space station, but you have a full 360 view, and so you can see the edge of the Earth, uh, you know, as you're flying over it. And at night, one day I was up there, and you're just flying through the stars of the sky, and I was writing that it was like, um, you know, 20,000 leagues under the sea when Captain Nemo opened that big window. That was exactly what it felt like. It was just amazing to see all the stars. Dina, any last thoughts? Um, just, are you having fun? Uh, just, are you having fun? Well, you know, of course I'm having fun. And I got my little buddy up here with me. I know you're taking good care of him. So thank you. I know he's in Cape Cod, loving life on the beach. So, of course, I'm having fun here. I know you guys are having fun down there this summer. I know Woods Hole in the summertime is beautiful. So enjoy the summer while you have it. Uh, Sonny, we, our time is just about up. We just want to say thanks. I mean, who would have ever thought we'd be talking to the space station on the radio? So, uh, Sonny, good luck with your trip and uh, good luck with the road race and the triathlon and your research. Thank you very much, Mindy. It's great to talk to you. We'll see you when we get back. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WCAI radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from CNN. This 
This is CNN. How do you hear me? We got you loud and clear. How me? Uh, I hear you loud and clear. And, and joining me now from the International Space Station is Expedition 32 flight engineer Sunita Williams. Uh, Sunny, it's good to speak with you. I, I, I have to ask how you're doing up there, but I have to tell you, I don't. The image of you is, is really crystal clear. It's amazing to see you like this. Can you just tell us how far up in the sky you are? How fast you're going? Yeah, we're about 220 miles above the planet, uh, zipping around at about 17,500 miles an hour, so that's about uh, five miles a second. Um, so we're, we're going a little bit faster than any airplane down there or any car on the road right now. So um, the view is, is quick, but it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, again, it's just remarkable to see you like this, because I just saw you here on Earth, and again, this picture is just so clear. We also watched your launch from Kazakhstan on July 15th. Uh, how was that for you, and how was the launch and docking? Uh, the launch was spectacular. You know, it went just, uh, just as planned. Everything was perfect. Um, the two days in space was actually just a lot of fun. You know, three of us, uh, Yuri, Aki, and myself, uh, and, uh, you know, spending, spending some time just getting, resting up and getting ready for the docking. The docking happens about two days after launch, and that, again, went picture perfect. It was an automated docking, and everything just went absolutely on time uh, at the right right. Uh, time and place, and so we docked perfectly on time. It was it was just perfect. You know, and you, you took me around a, a mock-up, obviously, of where you are now. We talked a lot about sleeping, which I was I'm fascinated by. I even got one of your sleep pods, if you remember. How, how are you sleeping? How, how does it feel for you up there? So, an interesting question, you know, because people always ask, like, how do you sleep? Of course, there's no bed, so we have sleeping bags. And we open the sleeping bags on the space, on the uh, Soyuz and stretch them out there. Some of the rec recommendations, by the way, for the Soyuz is to have your head in the center because it does a solar spin um, while we're just uh, orbiting, while we're waiting to do a, a burn to get closer to the space station. And part of that is, you know, just so you don't get sick and feeling that centrifuge feeling. Um, but, uh, you know, all three of us felt pretty good, and we, we slept like that the first night, but then afterwards we just slept anywhere we wanted to sleep. So now we're, that we're on the space station, we have four of us sleeping in the module uh, that's right in front of the U.S. laboratory, which is called Node 2, and we sleep in a little square pattern, four, four sleep stations together, and then uh, there's two sleep stations back in the Russian segment behind us. And sleeping's been great. Brought my sleeping bag into my sleep station, closed the doors, it's quiet, it's dark in there. Um, I got it, my own, we all have our own laptops in there so we could do email while we're in there. So it's actually been really nice. And um, some people also talk about having some back pain from your spine stretching. Uh, I think mine maybe got flexible from my last flight being up here because I didn't really feel too much back pain at all this, this, time, at, this time around. So sleeping's been great. Eating's been great. You know, everything's been, been pretty perfect so far. Yeah, and you know one of the, one of the other things I did when I when I visited you at Johnson Space Center was to do a, a essentially a virtual reality spacewalk, and it was I mean it was remarkably challenging I found for myself. I even got nauseated even in the virtual reality. Are, and, uh, do you have any spacewalks planned? Yeah, we have one planned for the end of August. It's uh, called EVA-18. We have a, a big box, a big computer uh, power switching unit outside that we're going to switch out and also run some cables uh, from uh, the U.S. segment back to the Russian segment to pro provide power for a module that they'll put up in the future. Um, but, you know, when we're up here for a little while, uh, we get pretty used to being in different orientations. Like, it's not, it's not a big deal to just turn around. So some of that stuff that you felt while you were doing the virtual reality lab, still having gravity pulling on you, you know, we don't feel that here at all. And particularly after being here for a little while and then doing a spacewalk, uh, I, you know, I think it feels pretty natural. The only big thing is wearing that, that big uh, EMU or spacesuit that, uh, that you saw pretty up front and close. That's still a little bit hard to work in, and uh, that's why we work out pretty much uh, a lot every day while we're here up on the space station to make sure we're physically ready to do the spacewalk.
Well, that's a perfect transition, phys being physically ready, because you and I also have decided to do this triathlon together mid-September, the Malibu uh, Nautica Triathlon. You're going to do it in space. I'm going to do it on Earth. And, uh, again, it was one of the most fascinating things for me to watch you train on Earth. How, and, and you've done the Boston Marathon before from space, back in 2007, I believe. How is your training going? How, what's it like up there? Well, you know, the adaptation uh, is is great for space. You know, up here everything feels a little bit easier. You know, just you just saw Aki floating by. It just takes one hand to move yourself. Um, but then when you start simulating gravity, when you get on the treadmill, you have a harness on that's pulling you down, or you get on the weightlifting machine and you're actually doing squats and deadlifts against a a, you know, a, a weight based on vacuum, it hurts. Um, so this first two weeks we've sort of used as uh, just get used to the equipment, get uh, get used to the protocols that we're doing. Um, so I think we're at that point that we're finally adapted and ready to start building on it. So just watch out because I'm, now I'm ready to really start uh, preparing for the, for the triathlon. And watching the Olympics up here has been really motivating to uh, turn us all into really good athletes. <laughs> right. No, I, I better watch what I say here. If I get beat uh, by you up in space, uh, but you are going 17,000 miles an hour, so you do have that going for you. You, 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 have, the, you have the bike, I believe, right? I mean, can, can you just quickly show us how you do this? Sure. I, I was talking about the bike when you were visiting us before because luckily here on sp in space, we don't need a seat. All we do is uh, put our feet in the pedals, and I'll demonstrate here. And station this Houston ACR, check that your mic is on. Sorry about that. In the floating, it got turned off. Um, so we also have a computer here that we can dial in the resistance and the speed. And uh, then we also, just for health purposes, take our heart rate as we're riding. And uh, so we can, this is how I'm going to uh, simulate the bike ride. So for the hills, I can increase my resistance to match uh, the, the route that you're going to take. Because I would, I would assume that Malibu is not flat like Houston, right? Not, not, not flat, right. We want you to increase that resistance quite high, I think, for this. <laughs> you, you, does, does it, I don't know if you can still hear me, uh, Sonny, but that, does it, you, you were saying you had to just get used to doing this. Does it hurt your knees? Because you don't have, like, you, you think about having some gravity to help force your legs through the revolutions riding a bike. I mean, does it, does it hurt the joints when you're doing it this way? No, you know, surprisingly enough, the bike for me is uh, is is really good for your uh, your thighs and also cardiovascular. Uh, as soon as I start res increasing the res resistance on the bike, I think uh, the cardiovascular part sort of starts to take over um, for me. So that you know, the knees are not a problem at all. I think we get a really good knee and leg workout all for our joints, particularly our hips, our knees, and our ankles on the advanced resistive exercise device, and that's what that's made for. You know, you know, up here, of course, we lose uh, muscle mass and bone density just instantaneously, as every day, because we're not we don't we're not under the influence of gravity, and so we definitely need some uh, some type of loading on those parts of our body. And the A red does that, and also the treadmill does that as you uh, you know as you run, and then you come down and you know put a you know your foot flat on the treadmill as you're running. So both of those things are good for the bone mass and and the and the mus muscle muscle mass and bone density, but this guy for sure is good for cardiovascular. Yeah, it's amazing. And I did the uh, the um, treadmill with you, and you're actually bungee corded down into the treadmill to give you that that resistance. I got to ask really quick. I also visited the food lab when I was with you, and I think people uh, imagine you know food out in space to be pretty bland stuff. I know you like. Uh, a great deal of uh, choice uh, options with your food. How how is it going up there for you? Are you are you getting the types of food that you want? 
Yeah, we have a really good, pretty good menu of food, and uh, one thing that's associated with that, people send up uh, as our, our bonus container, and also just in general, we have condiments, you know, so we have hot sauce, uh, you know, red pepper paste, garlic paste, and that and that type of stuff, Tabasco. So that makes the food taste a little bit better. Um, but you have to remember, we don't have a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we brought up in our Soyuz some tomatoes, and that was uh, that was a treat for a while. Uh, everything sort of is a little bit of, of a casserole type of consistency, sticky and stuff like that. So you don't get a lot of crunch, um, maybe except for some nuts and things like that. And uh, it gets a little bit tiring drinking your coffee out of a bag, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll enjoy my cup of coffee when I get home. You know, six months is a small amount, a small price to pay for uh, not enjoying that cup of coffee in the morning sitting out on the porch. It's just absolutely fascinating what you're doing, and even describing the food. You don't want crumbs going around the, uh, the capsules you described it to me. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, uh, Sunita Williams. I, I am looking forward to doing the triathlon with you, and most importantly, though, uh, come back safely. Thank you very much. It's great to talk to you, and good luck on the triathlon. We'll see you out on the road there. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thanks, Sonny. Thank you, WCAI Radio and CNN Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.